So we, when we rule on something, we have to have knowledge. And as we know the famous story where a man killed 99 men and came to a rahib, a monk, and said, I have killed 99 men, would Allah forgive me? So the monk, it says, how could Allah forgive you? He killed 99 people deliberately, Allah will never forgive you. So this man says to himself, since I will never be forgiven, I might as well kill him, and he killed him and made them 100. And then the man goes forward and asks a scholar, he says, I have killed a hundred people, would Allah forgive me? He said, yes, Allah forgives everything. Just leave this land, the bad land you're in, that uh, you maybe have bad friends and bad, uh, bad influence, and go to another land where you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we know, he, go, he heads out to the other land, and he dies in the way. And the angels are disputing, should he go to hell or should he go to al Jannah? Because all he did was bad deeds, but he left his home for the sake of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel alayhi salam to rule among the angels. And he says, measure the distance between the old city and the new city. And if he's closer to the new city, he says he goes to al Jannah. And the hadith it says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reduced the distance to the new city, so Allah forgives him and he goes to al Jannah. But the moral of the story, the monk had ruled something he has no knowledge of. Yes, he worships Allah, but just because he's a good worshiper doesn't mean he should have given advice or rule. He doesn't have the knowledge. And he had harmed himself and harmed others unintentionally. By ruling something unintentionally he has no knowledge of, he harmed himself and harmed others. And that's why if we don't know, as the same, if somebody asks you something, and if you say, I don't know, you have given the right fatwa. I don't know. And as we remember, a man came a long ways to Abdullah ibn Umar and came to ask him a question. And he said, I came on behalf of my people to ask you this important question. So after he asked, Abdullah ibn Umar said, I do not know. And the man got very upset. I traveled all this way. They tell me Abdullah ibn Umar is the one of the most knowledgeable people. And he tells me, I do not know. So the man kind of got upset and left. And then he came back and said, Subhanallah, I am sorry. Maybe you do not know, you answered the right thing. Subhanallah. Abdullah ibn Umar is saying, I don't know. But how many of us would, re would reply to somebody, I don't know? We're embarrassed to say, we say my opinion, I heard, I read, all these things without even if we know if we, we heard is right or if what we read is right. We just uh, say something because we are embarrassed to say, I do not know. Subhanallah. So here the Rahim, had, um, had the, the monk had hurt himself and hurt others. Why? Because he uh, uh, tried to say something he had no knowledge of. So here we have to stick to the scholars and ask the scholars. And as we said before, when a man came to uh, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu and said, if a man kills somebody, would Allah forgive him? So Ali ibn Abi Talib says Allah would never forgive him. And he recites the ayah, he who kills one as if he killed all mankind. A month later, another man comes and says, Ya Imam, if somebody kills somebody, would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives him? He says, of course, Allah forgives everything except the shirk. So the, uh, the companions of the Imam ask him, Ya Imam, same question. Two different answers. If I kill with, if somebody kills somebody, would Allah forgive him? And you give two different answers. He said, when, when I, uh, the first person, I had sensed he's coming to take permission to kill somebody, so I wanted to block the road in front of him and said, Allah will never forgive the killer. And the other person, I sensed that he had killed already, and I wanted to give him hope. Subhanallah. So this answer is not based on the question. The faqih has to know and has to ask enough questions and have to have the, the ability to read the question rather than I read in a book. So it makes a big difference. And as we said before, somebody called into a sheikh and said, my, ma my uh, mother came to me last week and said that the, my wife is uh, my sister from breastfeeding, that she had breastfed her and she is my sister, and I've been married to this woman for 12 years, and I had children from her, what do I do? And as we know, the, the, the person in Islam is not married, allowed to marry his sister from breastfeeding. So here, somebody who doesn't know will ask right away say, well, you have to separate, subhanAllah. But what does this shaykh ask him? Rather than tell him what the Islamic ruling is, he says, 
Did your mother and your wife have an argument lately? He said, yes, last week they had a very bad fallout. He said, well, you all fixed the relation between your mother and your uh, wife because she's not your sister. Your mother just made it up because she's a man at your wife. Subhanallah. So the faqih has to listen, has to understand. It is not just because he read or he knows a ruling. He has to understand. And that's what the knowledge is. And that's what we have to learn, inshallah.